Hi, in the previous video in this digital logic uh, design series, we took a look at Boolean algebra and De Morgan's theorems and uh, the various laws, commutative laws, associative laws, distributive laws, and the, all that horrible like Boolean algebra type stuff. And it was quite theoretical, but important stuff. But we didn't really look at how do we actually create a practical uh, digital logic circuit based on uh, the truth table. So that's what we're going to take a look at today, designing combinatorial logic circuits or how to uh, convert basically a truth table into digital logic or complex uh, digital logic to perform the function that you intend. Because when you are uh, designing a system, you want something, you've got various inputs. So let's go A, B, and we'll have an output X. And you've no doubt seen the truth tables in before in the previous videos you most certainly have we've got all the various combinations of the inputs in this case there's only four of them because we only got two inputs and let's say we wanted our outputs like this right how do we convert that into a digital logic well we're going to use what's called the sum of products method to do this so what we do is we uh, look at which of the outputs here are one and then we're going to create that using AND gate so any expression like that we just go one by one through the true table in this case it's a real easy true table there's only four rows in our true table and only one of them has a one on the output it's really easy so we're going to uh, create the sum of products so what we need to do is look for the first one here that contains a one and we're going to create that using AND gate. So let's do that. So we've got our inputs A and B here. So we'll actually go up here like this. So this particular line here, A and B inputs. Now, uh, we want the output to be a 1 when A is 0 and B is 1. And we need to do this using an AND gate like this. So this is X on our output. So how do we do that? Well, it's easy. A needs to have an inverter like that. We've got to convert the zero of the A here into a one and B is already a one. So we can feed B just straight into our AND gate. And believe it or not, that's it. X equals, well, not A because we've inverted it and B. And believe it or not, that is the entire, exp that is the entire circuit for this truth table. Why? Because we've gone through and looked at all of all of these, this one, this one, this one, and this one here, and only one of them has a one on the output. And because this is digital logic, it's either a one or a zero, the, the output here, X, can either be a one or a zero, and we've done the case here where it's a one. So in all other cases, it doesn't matter what A and B are doing here, this output X will always be a zero. So it doesn't matter if they're both zero, it'll give a zero. If they're one and zero, it'll give a zero. One and one, it'll give a zero. Because we've designed it around this case here, and all the others are just gonna come out in the wash. So bingo, we've done it. So let's see where this expression, sum of products comes from. So what we'll do now is just erase that and we will put a one in there. So we've changed it. So this one's already uh, the same here. So we don't have to change that. This circuit here is going to remain exactly the same. But because we've got another expression in our uh, truth table here that is a one on the output, we have to once again create, use another AND gate here like this to actually generate that input. So we're going to have the input in this case a is a one so we don't need that but you guessed it b is going to need the inverter so it's opposite to what we had before and in this case x equals a and not b like that but of course we're not done yet we've done the product part of this so each one of these is uh, essentially the product uh, aspect of it but now we have to do the sum part of it and we do that using an OR gate like this and we just uh, take each expression that we got from each one of these uh, terms in our truth table here and then we just all them together or we sum them together with an OR gate to give us a final expression like that bingo now we have the complete circuit 
which represents this complete truth table here in the sum of products form. Beautiful. That's it. We've designed a combinatorial logic circuit based on our desired truth table here because in system design you're going to have a bunch of inputs that you want to uh, that you have from very whatever it is and then you want to actually uh, do some logic on that and produce a particular output and this is how you do it it's that simple now in practice this might not be the easiest circuit to implement if you've got your 74 series uh, logic or whatever then because look we've got an OR gate over here we've got two AND gates we've got two inverters you know three different types of logic gate there so it'd be nice if we actually consolidated this circuit into just one particular type of gate and probably the best way to do this and most versatile as we'll see is with the NAND gate so let's actually um, take this circuit and convert convert it into uh, just using NAND gates. Now we can do this over here like this, a NAND, or our, our OR, we can convert into NAND by uh, inverting or knotting the inputs like that. So we could have our circuit just like this, but we've still got our inverters over here and we've got AND gates here. But look, we've got our knots here. What if we just moved this knot from here to here and here to here? You guessed it, we've got, let's get rid of that, that, and we use NAND gates there, bingo. Then we can simply erase our inverters there and we can put in a NAND gate like that, just both inputs like that, and Bob's your uncle. That is the equivalent circuit to that up there, but it's it's using basically uh, the same number of gates. It's using five gates, but they're all NAND gates. So that can be advantageous if you're using uh, discrete logic or whatnot. It can be just very handy to use the one particular type of gate. And we actually forgot to look at our final expression here. X equals actually not A and B or A and not B like that you can put brackets around those if you want to keep it nice and tidy and that's our uh, boolean logic expression that's our boolean algebra expression for this particular circuit and of course we've seen in the uh, previous video how we can actually use de morgan's uh, theorem and uh, the various uh, laws to actually uh, simplify boolean algebra like this so this would really come into play if you had a b c d e f inputs like this and if you even well just those alone would produce a massive truth table um you know you have to go through one zero like and imagine if you had a whole bunch of those the expression would be can end up being absolutely enormous not Oh, excluding the fact that you could have multiple outputs if you really wanted as well and this one could be a one or you know something like that um, whatever you could have various uh, outputs for various uh, purposes so you can combine lots of inputs lots of outputs and you'd end up with a massive uh, expression this one is about as simple as it gets and yes we can use those uh, laws and uh, theorems in the previous video to do that but I think in the next video we'll show you a uh, graphical technique for doing circuit uh, simplification called Carno mapping um, and it just uses a visual uh, it's a visual way uh, to do it and it is quite neat and you might think well you know, nobody uses this sort of uh, stuff anymore it's just all theoretical stuff you learn in your digital logic 101 class well no all this um, sort of stuff is still valid whether you're designing the latest Intel you know i7 whatever uh, processor because just reducing the number of gates um, circuit digital circuit simplification is very important not only do you uh, use less gates use less uh, silicon area which makes your chip smaller it makes it faster as well and all sorts of stuff so this sort of stuff is still done today even though you know there's not many people designing with you know big systems with discrete uh, 74 series uh, logic anymore this was of course a big thing back in the day to save uh, X number of uh, chips on your board was very handy but it is still very important to know this um, from a digital logic uh, point of view so we'll look at digital um, Carnot map simplification next time so I hope you enjoyed this and if you did please give it a big thumb oh well thumbs up that's not that's like a
inductor, isn't it? Give it a big inductive thumbs up. If you liked it, and as always, discuss it down below in the comments or on the EV blog forum. Catch you next time.